Hi, welcome back for another tutorial. This is Chimera, otherwise known as Brendan, and uh, I also make ambient music as Marin Karras. So this one is my third tutorial for Sonic Academy. In the previous two, I made track walkthroughs from start to finish. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take a look at Live 10, which is due to be released on February the 6th. So I've been using it for the last six months. I've made all my recent music on it, and I have to say, I really like it a lot. So in the tutorial video, I'm gonna go into some of the new features and additions that have been added to live. I'm gonna have like uh, various demonstrations and uh, discussions about each of those. Uh, I'm gonna summarize um, a lot of the other maybe under the hood kind of changes that have been done. And I'm gonna make a track sketch. So it's not gonna be maybe as fully featured as my two previous tutorials, but it will still be a track from start to finish using a lot of the new instruments and effects and um, methods that you can use now in Live 10. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get going. So let's have a look at some of the changes that have been added to the preferences in Live. To open the preferences, just press Command and Comma on Mac or Control Comma on Windows. So first things first, on the look, feel screen, you'll notice that there's now a pen tablet mode. This is for any of you who are using uh, pen tablets or touchscreen devices. So this vastly improves the experience for you. So uh, before there was maybe issues with trying to like zoom or, or use the mouse. Um, there were workarounds using the options text file, which I won't get into here, but um, it wasn't really properly implemented until now. So that's a very cool new feature, pen tablet mode. Now, if you're looking at this on Windows, somewhere around here, there will also be high DPI mode, which is enabled by default. And this has been long requested for Windows users in uh, Live 9. So finally, for any of you with like 4K monitors or high def monitors, you'll be able to see everything in high definition and also your plugins will be scaled properly. Um, so that's that's great. I mean, us uh, Mac users have Retina support for a while now, but um, it's good to finally have full 4K support for our Windows users as well. Now, the other uh, difference here is that the skins, what were formerly known as skins, are now known as themes. And there's a few less than before. So the default one is mid-light. Uh, we've also got light, mid-dark, dark, and this was the original Live 9 one. Uh, so any of you using custom skins, the good news is you can still use them. The bad news is they might not work as they have done in previous versions because certain things like, for instance, here, the way that the buttons are now uh, displayed here, uh, they might not show up on certain skins. So you just have to um, drop them in as before and see if they still work. Um, there's probably an easy enough way to edit them, though, if you want to. I believe they're available now as XML files, so if you're... A little bit savvy with that, you could open them up and make some adjustments yourself. So moving on, the audio section. Um, there has been one new feature, which is very cool indeed, is that you can now rename the inputs and outputs of your audio interface. So you can see here in my one, I've got like quite a few, and this is really handy for um, for me, for all my hardware here, I've just got all, them all renamed to exactly what I need to. So it's very cool when I'm uh, recording. So you can see from here, I can just quickly access whichever one that I need to. Um, there's no need to kind of like guess which input it's connected to. And likewise, you can do the same for your stereo outputs. So you could just rename that stereo out and done. There you go. And you can see it's updated here, stereo out. Um, so Link has also had an update. Link now has a new feature called Stop Start Sync. And this is this is pretty cool, actually, because what this does is, well, previously with Link, all of the computers were independent in the sense that they could start and end whenever they wanted. And you can still do that. But now if you enable Start Stop Sync, you could start and stop everyone else's computers or link enabled devices which are which are attached to link so this is cool if you're in a, i don't know i guess a jam session with a bunch of other musicians and you all want to start at the same time just enable start stop sync 
and you can do that um apart from that the functionality from link has not changed uh but that is a very cool feature to add so the only other section which has had a update is the library section so in live 9 you were able to add the live 8 library here in this section it's not possible to do that anymore but you can download the live 8 legacy pack from the ableton help center or you could also, if you still have your actual Live 8 library installed, you could add it as a folder to places here. But the entire core library has been updated with a bunch of new sounds. And uh, I really don't think that you're gonna to need to go back to your, your Live 8 presets or sounds. Um, everything in, in the Live 10 core library is very cool indeed. Okay, so let's have a look at collections. Collections is a really cool way that you can organize anything you want within the live browser. So anything that already appears in the live browser from the effects, presets, uh, samples, um, what else, uh, live sets, anything. Anything that already displays here in the browser. So collections you'll see up here. And if you hover over collections, you'll see that edit tab that opens there. So if you click on that, you can then enable the rest of the collections here. Now by default, they're just named after their colors but you can also, of course, rename any of these. Just right click on it or Command R should work and uh, you can just rename it to whatever you want. So, um, okay. And then you can disable the ones that you don't wanna see yet. So all you have to do then uh, is go into your browser, right click here, and then you can assign a color to it. And you can assign more than one color as well. So if you want to add this to as many as you want, you can do that. So then this SHO1 project is going to show up here and here. Okay. And in the same way, if you want to unassign one, just right click on it. Clear all colors. And now it's gone. Click back. It's gone. Okay, so you can do that, like I said, for anything. So you could go into any of the samples here and you could just add that as well here. It's very handy. So, I mean, it just gives you like an extra level of um, organization uh, for everything that you work on. I mean, for me, as you can see, so I've got a setup here. Uh, I got a bunch of my effects that I use a lot. Um, for me, it was always a bit of a pain having to scroll through like the effects to find the ones that I wanted to use. I mean, I know there's not that much, but it is still kind of handy just being able to whittle it down to the ones that I use regularly. And uh, as you can see, I've got some like racks in here with uh, with some like VSTs too. All of the stuff that I use most frequently. Um, I've got a separate one for VSTs. This is just mainly VSTs, which are not part of a rack um, and VST instruments. So these are just ready and waiting for me here. And then uh, live, this is just a folder with some live sets that I'm working on for my own live set. Um, like I said, you can, you can assign up to seven and you can put in whatever you want there. One of the other areas that's changed here is the pack section. So now you can actually download and update and check for updates for all of your packs here so any of the packs that are part of your license will will display in the available pack section and as you can see you can just download one and then click install it's super simple so you don't have to go to the website although you can of course still download everything from the website as well but it just makes it much handier and easier to get all those new sounds and you'll also see there's an update section as well so you've got an, an existing pack here all you have to do is click the up install and it will update it. Bingo. Very handy indeed. And of course, at the bottom, you can just click here to get more packs if you want. One other handy new feature in Live 10 is the set backup. So what that means is when you save your project under a name and you click on current project. Okay, so I saved this one as Deep Techno Vibes. Now any changes that you make any time that you save or save as, which I'm gonna do now by Command S, you see it adds a backup folder here. And this saves 
this just what I saved now is going to be saved as an iteration here. So if I make any new changes and save again, then a new iteration is put in. And it stores up to 10 versions of your set. So this is cool if you want to go back, if you feel like maybe an earlier version of your project was better. Now, some of you, like me, might have been in the habit anyway of saving your live set with, for instance, like one, two, three after it. But this this is just maybe a, an automated way of doing that now. So it's pretty handy if you want to revert to an earlier version of the set. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.